Hello. This is time to talk about uh, parallel programming in Ruby 3 with Guild. Uh, as you can see, so my English is not so good, so you can download this presentation, uh, and I uploaded uh, this link to the Twitter, so please check this Twitter. Uh, I want, today, I want to talk about these items. So, at first, I want to, to introduce Ruby 2.6 performance improvement, not about uh, instruction sequence, but about uh, uh, some, some contribution of mine. And I'll introduce the main topic, Guild. I've uh, proposed Guild idea at RubyConf 2016, and I want to show, uh, share with you about the uh, current Guild progress. So I'm a programmer. Uh, I changed my job uh, several times, but I, I didn't ten, change my, uh, my mission to improve the uh, performance of Ruby virtual machine or Ruby threading or Ruby garbage collection. I'm, uh, just now, I'm a member of Cookpad, and so please stop by our Cookpad booth in this uh, Ruby conference. And also, I'm a father of the youngest attendee of Ladies Girls Tokyo 10th. <laughs> Thank you. Very cute. <laughs> this is only, uh, uh, only one photo in this presentation. Okay. So, on Ruby 2.6, uh, uh, on Ruby 2.6, uh, there are several uh, performance improvements. Uh, maybe most biggest one is uh, uh, MJIT, a JIT compiler for the Ruby, but there are other optimization which is, will affect your application. For example, proc call is uh, 1.4 times faster, and uh, uh, block call, uh, calling block call uh, sorry, calling pass block is 2.6 times faster than uh, uh, all the Ruby versions. And the biggest contribution, oh, thank you. This is not so big feature. I show you the more bigger feature about the transient heap. Transient heap is a new memory management mechanism. I don't show details about uh, uh, Ruby's memory management, but uh, Ruby uses malloc and uh, uh, free a function called pay combination to allocate and free uh, memories. But uh, malloc and free combination has uh, uh, several performance issues about uh, uh, speed and uh, the space because of the fragmentations. To solve these uh, malloc uh, issues, uh, I introduced transient heap. I also don't show details about uh, 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 transient heap because it, I have only a 40 minutes. So, and this, this talk is not about the transient heap, so uh, I only want to show, share the uh, concept of transient heap. Transient heap is uh, using, a, a generation, cop, uh, using a copy and generational garbage collection techniques. And, uh, uh, but I, so gen, generally speaking, MRI can't use a moving, mem memory moving technique because of the uh, conservative, uh, we, we use conservative garbage collection. But I introduced this moving technique with some limitation and uh, uh, MRI specific hacking. So uh, to keep compatibility with the current e existing code. With transient heap, we can speed up allocation for young memories. Uh, in this case, young memories uh, means no long living memories. So if you allocate uh, some memories and uh, free uh, immediately, it will be a young memory. Now we support transient heap for array, object, struct, and small number of uh, small elements of hash objects. String is big target of transient heap, but it is di too difficult to uh, support it, so, so it is uh, the future task. 
this just shows how fast uh, array co creation and GC collection uh, using transient heap compared with no transient heap version. So you can see, uh, so x axis shows uh, uh, how many, uh, the element of array and uh, the y axis shows uh, the how speed up compared with uh, no transient heap. So you can see no performance improvement with zero to three elements. Uh, this is because array with only a, uh, only a three, uh, zero to three element, we use uh, another optimized techniques, but so we don't use transient heap on the, these area, but we can see the uh, performance improvement for, uh, for the, uh, the four and greater elements. So you can see 50% faster. And also we can see the uh, hash allocation and deallocation with maybe it is 50% uh, or 100% uh, performance improvement for the small element of hash objects. Over eight elements, there are no speed up because transient heap is not used for the, uh, such a big, big hash objects. The, uh, let's summarize transient heap on Ruby 2.6. So transient heap is new memory hacking to improve the performance. It uses generational copy GC technique with MRI specific hacking to keep compatibility with the current code. Uh, with transient heap, you can improve your application's performance. You can, so I don't say your application should uh, improve the performance, but I, I want to say you can, your application can. Uh, so microbenchmarks show the good performance result, but I can see no performance improvement on this course ladies benchmark. So it, maybe it depends on the applications. So please try. So you can, you can try now, okay. So this talk is not about transient heap, but uh, uh, about the guild, so back to the main topic. Uh, this, is, this, short, this is a short summary of this talk. Guild is new concurrent abstraction for, to force uh, non-sharing mutable objects for Ruby 3. Now, uh, guild specification is not fixed yet. Also, guild implementation is not uh, finished. We have only a uh, uh, buggy implementation. So your comment or uh, your contribution is uh, highly uh, welcome. If you have uh, any interest about uh, concurrent programming with Ru Guild or something else, right? so I'm happy. Uh, this is uh, one uh, purpose of this talk. Let's start uh, talking about the guild background. Uh, there are two motivations to, uh, for guilds. One is productivity. So yesterday, Matsuki, uh, as, at Matsuki's performance, uh, sorry, productivity is the big, uh, biggest concern. I, I think so. So my, my opinion is uh, a thread is very, very difficult to make a thread safe program. There are many reasons to, reason to make uh, uh, the uh, reason about the difficulty of the thread programs, but the one biggest problem is, I think, is sharing mut mutable objects between uh, threads. It makes very difficult to make correct thread safe concurrent programs. Ruby is very product language, I think, and maybe you think. And uh, I believe uh, we, sh we can, uh, so it is happy uh, when, uh, uh, if we can make a uh, uh, concurrent program very easily. And uh, I want to, I want to uh, achieve this, this uh, such a productivity. The second one is performance by parallel computing. Now your computer has many, many cores. So you, we need to utilize such a core, but on current MRI can't uh, uh, cannot uh, provide a uh, way to utilize such a many cores. So I want to in introduce such a, uh, the convenient way to utilize the multiple cores. To achieve these goals, uh, I propose Guild, a new concurrent abstraction uh, at uh, RubyConf 2016, so two years ago. This idea is very simple. 
as I said, the difficulty of threat program programming is sharing mutable objects. So, bet uh, so sorry, uh, the difficulty of thread programming is sharing mutable objects between threads. So guild prohibit, so very idea is simple. So guild prohibit to share mutable objects between guilds. So I want to replace the thread into a uh, guild because of this productivity. Next is design. I'll share the current uh, guild design and I want to share the current discussion topics. Ruby interpreter can manage uh, multiple guilds. A guild has at least one thread. And when we run a Ruby interpreter, there, there is a, uh, one guild and which runs one thread. Threads in uh, one guild can not run in parallel, uh, but uh, because there are uh, giant rocks in each guild. However, threads belong to different guilds can run in parallel. So we can, uh, so if, if we make uh, uh, multiple guilds, then we can uh, run parallel programming in Ruby. This is a, a simple uh, example to make uh, two guilds. This is very similar. I, I think this is very similar to the thread programming on Ruby. You can pass block to guild.neo guild method and each block run in parallel on each guild. And so in this case, expression one and expression two run in parallel. Guild prohibit uh, sharing mutable objects. So normal string, array, hash, and blah, blah, blah. So, so many Ruby's objects are mutable. So we can't share uh, such a normal object each other on the, with multiple guilds. However, there are several uh, objects uh, we can share between guilds. We say uh, this, uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of object as a shareable object. We define shareable object and non-shareable objects. Separating this kind of, uh, two kind of objects, we can enjoy ordinal uh, programming using mutable states without threat safety uh, concerns in one guild because we can't share mutable objects between guilds. So in other words, uh, you can't make threat unsafe program on guilds. Data race, so threat unsafe or data lazy program, you can't write. Generally, most of objects are threat local uh, for ordinary uh, concurrent programs. So only a few objects are shared, so uh, that uh, we only need to concentrate on such a sharing object to make uh, threat, uh, sorry, concurrent programs, I think. So this, this page is about uh, non-shareable objects. So non-shareable object is uh, equal to the uh, most of objects, so most of ordinary objects. So uh, Ruby programs make many, many strings, array, hash, and so on, and they are mutable and non-shareable objects. Uh, a non-shareable object is a member of one guild, and other guilds can't access to the uh, uh, non-shareable objects. Easy, and uh, if you use uh, only one guild, so it means uh, it, very, uh, it is it is com uh, very uh, compatible with uh, Ruby two, the current version of Ruby. So you you can make uh, a compatible program with Ruby two and Ruby three very easy. We define four types uh, type of uh, shareable objects. So. In other words, uh, other, so other than these four types of objects are non-shareable objects. So we define four special, uh, special uh, four types of shareable objects. Immutable objects, class module objects, special mutable objects, and uh, isolated block objects. Important assumption is shareable objects only refer to shareable objects. So if shareable objects refer to point to a non-shareable object, we can share uh, 
a non-shareable object between girls. So we, to prohibit such a danger, so the, this assumption, we need to keep this assumption. The first shareable object is uh, immutable object. Uh, sharing, so sharing an immutable object is no problem, no data lacy issue, because we can't mutate this kind of object. So I think it is easy to understand, but uh, our, uh, one difficulty of uh, immutable object is it is not uh, equal to the flows object. So for example, for example, this A1, this array is immutable object because this array is frozen and also uh, this array only point to the numeric, immutable nu numeric object. But this uh, array, the array A2, is not immutable. So array is frozen, but the array refers to the mutable object, so created by object new. So it, we need to care about that. So maybe we need to introduce uh, some deep freeze syntax or methods. And also, uh, numeric objects or symbol objects or uh, some, uh, some literal objects are immutable, so you can share uh, them easily. And also, frozen string objects uh, is uh, immutable if they don't have uh, instance variables. Class and module objects are also shareable objects. So it, uh, it is very difficult to understand, but uh, uh, and we need to we need to introduce some more consideration uh, or, uh, protocol to share the class and module objects. But we maybe class and module objects should be a shareable object because all objects refer to own classes and uh, uh, classes can refer to module objects. So that the sharing class and module module object is straightforward and it is easy to make some kind of programs. However, uh, there is a dis disadvantage of this idea because we need to introduce new protocol to refer non-shareable objects from classes and modules. Be uh, this is because classes and modules can refer uh, the mutable object by cl uh, class variable constant or uh, instance variable of uh, class and module objects. So we need to we need to introduce some special protocol to prohibit uh, such a mu sharing mutable objects. I skip this discussion on this presentation because uh, there is uh, no time to discuss more. The third uh, shareable object is uh, the special mutable objects. So sometimes we need to share data structures such as the shared array or shared hash, hash objects or something like that. So to share the data structure, we introduce special mutable objects. Uh, special means that we need to uh, introduce some uh, special protocol to access these uh, contents of uh, special mutable objects. For example, locking correctly or uh, transactional, uh, transaction and so on. I don't implement it yet, but so it, it is, uh, needed for the, some kind of programs. For example, closure languages, clo, clo, the closure language has a shared mutable data, uh, data structure uh, using a software transactional memory, uh, we say STM, so it is uh, one strong option to implement. Compare with normal objects like array, hash, and so on, uh, special mutable objects introduce uh, additional overhead because we need to uh, introduce some uh, protocol. So as I said, transaction or something like that. But uh, I think this, ki this kind of overhead is not a problem because only, a uh, as I said, only a few shareable objects uh, we need to do use on the, on the concurrent, ordinary concurrent programs. The last one is isolated proc. Proc objects can refer out, out, so proc objects can refer the uh, out, outer local variables. For example, uh, this proc has a local uh, uh, refer 
the local variable a, and this local variable is at here, so it is the outer local variable, and it uh, refers to the, the mutable objects. So it means that the uh, proc object can't be a share, shareable object. But we sometimes we want to uh, pass the proc object to the guild, uh, another guild. So we to achieve this uh, this one. So we introduce a, a proc isolate method. Proc isolate method make duplicate proc named isolated proc. Isolated proc can't access to the outer local variable. So if we if we make a, a isolated proc, then the this uh, local uh, access to local outer local variable is prohibited. So this line, uh, this line, uh, it raises a, a runtime error. So we we can uh, we we can introduce some kind of uh, shareable object with uh, proc isolate. So as I show the, this small example, the we the past. Uh, pass the block uh, transform uh, to the isolated block implicitly. And uh, in this case, the, uh, this line, this one, uh, this uh, local variable G1 is outer local variable. So this, in this case, it lays uh, a runtime error because the block uh, transformed to the uh, isolated block. Okay, I showed some kind of uh, shareable objects. Uh, this is uh, uh, some uh, information. So other languages are using similar ideas. So similar to the, so there are several languages using similar idea of guilt. It means uh, some uh, these languages introduce limitation of sharing state or shared nothing model they make, they use. Uh, Racket programming language, Kotlin native, or shell script or JavaScript, and Alan Alexa processes. So, Alan Alexa processes. So, the name and the model are different, but similar ideas they use. So, I think uh, the, this approach is not so long, I think. Okay, so, we need to prepare the inter uh, guild communication API. So, I designed based on actor model uh, at at uh, as this moment. The destination of the uh, uh, sorry. Destination address is described by the guild object itself, like Alan or Alexa's process. And sending shareable objects means uh, uh, sending only reference to the object, so it is very uh, lightweight. And also, if we send a non shareable object such as uh, an array, we have two methods. We have two methods the copy method and the uh, move method. This is a, a very simple server client program using uh, uh, the inter uh, guild communication API. And this line shows uh, how to send uh, this line. This line shows how to send uh, uh, object to the guild one. So in this case, the num numeric 30 uh, ob uh, object is sending to the guild one. And at guild one, the, this line receives the ob, uh, object guild, uh, th the object uh, numeric 13, 30, and calculate something, and this line return back the, the result of calculation. So this is a very simple example of the, uh, the server client model of with guild. Sending uh, so we need so we we I said that uh, 
we can't share the non-shareable objects. So if we want to sh send uh, uh, the non-shareable objects, we need to sum do something. So the one method is copy. So copy is very, very uh, easy to understand. So if you want to uh, copy the uh, O1, then uh, the object O1 and child objects are copied to the guild 2. So the point is we need to copy everything so the O1 can traverse. Traversal from O1. The move semantics is uh, some, some difficult. So it, if we move the object O1 to other guild, then we can't access O1 from guild one. So this, in this case, so if we move O1, just after uh, the, the sending, the guild two can access to the O1 and the child objects, O2 and O3, but uh, from guild one, we can't access to the uh, send, sent object. It is faster than the copy semantics because we don't need to copy everything. Move semantics is suitable for huge string or data or I.O. objects. Uh, for example, Master Guild makes a socket object, I.O. object, uh, by uh, accept method and uh, move, move, to, uh, uh, move it to a worker guild. And the worker guild receive a request and sending request in, the, in parallel. And after that, Master Guild uh, does need to uh, access to a socket anymore. So this is a summary of shareable and non-shareable objects. So it shows the uh, 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 details, but the important is we, uh, we can't share the mutable objects. And uh, uh, in, this, in, in a threat program, we can share uh, some kind of shared objects uh, accidentally, and it will be a bug. But with guilt, we can make a, a correct uh, non-data lazy uh, concurrent programs. This is a discussion to one discussion topic. So I show the uh, I, I I I said that uh, I design based uh, uh, I design communication API based on actor model, but we have uh, another option. So actor model is uh, 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 the destination is specified by guild or process in Erlang or Elixir languages. Uh, but uh, some other languages like uh, Go language, JavaScript, Kotlin, native or Rocket programming languages, it uh, use a CSP model. CSP means uh, communication sequential processes. I, I, find, uh, I searched this uh, long name uh, in Wikipedia. Uh, so in this case, we manipulate channel object explicitly and for example, we can, we can transfer the channel object to the other guilds and so on. So they ha we have uh, two options, I think, and they have uh, advantages and disadvantages. So we need to compare such uh, uh, pros and cons and we need to, we need to, def uh, we need to decide which we need to do that. Which we need to use. So, in fact, I introduced guild idea with CSP model. So, uh, using channel explicitly, but just now I'm, I think the actor model is more suitable for Ruby. But we need to consider more and more. Another difficult topic is how to retrieve multiple channels. So sometimes we need to manipulate man, uh, multiple channels because, for example, uh, we want to use data channel and control channel, uh, or the, uh, if we want to monitoring the multiple guilds, so we need to uh, communicate with the multiple channels. But the uh, API design is very difficult, I think. So we can relate the multiple channel with the programming technique with uh, one channel, one communication channel, but uh, it is diff a bit difficult for, uh, and it is tough for the Ruby programmers, I, ordinary Ruby programmer. So I think we, if we, pro if we can provide a good, uh, good API, so it will be nice. For example, Go programming language has a select 
syntax, so we can we can write a uh, uh, communicate. So we we so we can retrieve the multiple channel. So in this case, X or create uh, channel, and also uh, the R and or X process we can handle multiple channel with pattern match, and also. Uh, JavaScript worker, we, we need to register a handler in a uh, communicate message channel. And also, uh, Rocket Press use their uh, event handler uh, as the uh, thing uh, special uh, methods, special functions. On, so, I review the some kind, some uh, other languages. And uh, for example, uh, on Ruby, on actor model, we can introduce a tag uh, to specify the channel and receive with specific uh, tags like that. So I don't uh, describe and uh, explain about this one, but uh, I want to share that uh, uh, I'm thinking about that just now. So if you have any uh, idea or comments, so it, it will be a very uh, nice for me. So this this is a, a channel case. Okay, so the I want to introduce some uh, implementation of yours, some about the uh, implementation. But the preliminary implementation, uh, we you can access to this one. But it has uh, some uh, many many bugs. So if you run some programs, you can see the uh, segmentation fault or something like that. So we need to, uh, we introduce some uh, special context uh, between, uh, between VM virtual machine and threads. Also, uh, we need to introduce uh, some uh, many, many fine grain synchronizations. So it means that we need to do uh, lazy thread safe, uh, sorry, lazy thread programming I need, we need to do. So I, so it means that it, multi set is programming is very, very difficult. So this is why my current implementation has many, many bugs. And also garbage collection is a big issue. So we need to stop, so the current implementation, we stop all of guilt and do the garbage collection process. So it means that we has only one object space. So we have, one preliminary implementation that we need to do more, and, uh, we need to do more and more. So fix garbage collection bugs and uh, introduce uh, some features. So prohibit sharing non-sharing objects and introduce synchronization to protect uh, VM-wide resources such as uh, 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 global variable or something like that. And introduce shareable object protocols. And performance is not so good. So we need to improve the performance. I have some uh, many uh, many many idea to improve the performance because I make uh, some uh, trial. For example, uh, I, this paper shows how to make a uh, uh, parallel thread on MRI. So we can. I think we can. Uh, we can introduce some te uh, optimization techniques from this paper to the current guild implementation, I think. Uh, the, another topic is naming. So in the Ruby world, naming is important. So the current guild name is a uh, code name. And uh, so we have uh, some reason why we choose the guild, but some, pe some people say guild is not so good name. So we are considering the name of guild. So I, I want to share that uh, guild is code name and uh, we are seeking new good names. So uh, I want to show the demonstration of the current uh, preliminary implementation. So I, into, uh, I prepared the 40 uh, virtual CPUs machine. So it means that uh, two 10 cores, two hyper-threading CPU, uh, we have two CPUs. On, uh, so we prepare two CPUs. So totally, uh, it, is, uh, it will be uh, 40 
about the CPUs. And I, the workload he, here, so, Fibo, so calculating the Fibonacci number many times, and the serial version of uh, computation is this line. So it is very simple, I think. And the guild version, or I make uh, uh, this kind of uh, work, master worker uh, model. So may, we can increase the, uh, the workers on this case. And the program is here, but so it is very long, but we, we can introduce uh, some framework to do such a, a commodity uh, example, I think. So making uh, uh, the, this example, so increasing the number of guilds, we can see the uh, speed up of uh, compare with uh, the sequential uh, serial execution. So the maximum improvement is maybe 15 or 16 times faster on 40 virtual CPUs. Maybe this uh, performance improvement is uh, good, I think, in this case. So next one is uh, change, so fix the, the number of guilds for, to 40 and uh, change the, uh, the workload, the number of N. In this case, uh, we can see the, we cannot see the performance improvement here, but we, so f calculating the FIV uh, 30, we can see the uh, very, uh, this uh, y-axis shows the execution. So serial execution uh, requires uh, about three, three hours, but uh, using guild, we, we only need uh, uh, 30 minutes. So it is very faster example, I think. So this is uh, uh, the speed up ratio. So if we use, uh, uh, if we calculate only a few uh, number of Fibonacci, so it, the overhead of guild is very, very high. So there are no uh, performance improvement here. But uh, if we in increase the, the task workload, we can see the performance improvement. And the last one demonstration is uh, uh, word count example. So we use uh, uh, word count, uh, we, we make a similar, similar framework, similar uh, master worker model with you. And the, the, uh, the result is very, very slow on the uh, 40 guilds. So execution, so y-axis is execution time, so higher is bad. And serial execution, uh, it requires only 1.7 seconds, but with 40 guilds, uh, it requires uh, six seconds. It's very bad ex uh, result. This is because uh, GC object allocation requires naive locking. And the current implementation, so this is only a current uh, implementation limitation, I think. So we need to improve. We can, we can solve this uh, uh, slowdown, I think. Okay, so the, today's talk is uh, about uh, Ruby 2.6, update all by my contribution. And I introduce uh, guilt the idea of guilt and discussion and implementation and demonstration so there are no time to uh, uh, make a q and a session so if you have any questions or uh, any comments so i'm happy to meet you with you thank you so much <laughs>